Hello everybody, welcome to this virtual class. Today is the first session of this virtual class and I'm doing it for the first time with you all. So I hope you will be very attentive in the class and watch this video very carefully so that you take away more knowledge from this class. So let us begin. You have learned about the Western Highlands and the Eastern Highlands of North America in the previous class. So today, in this first session of the virtual class, I'll be teaching you about the lowlands of North America. The lowlands of North America is divided into two parts. Firstly, the Great Central Lowland and number two, the Eastern Coastal Plain. The Great Central Lowlands, which stretches from Arctic Oceans in the north till Gulf of Mexico in the south. It falls between the Western Highlands and the Eastern Highlands. So this part includes the Great Central Lowland. The highest point in this Great Central Lowland is about 1500 meter or about 1,600 meters above the sea level, which also lies just near the western highlands. Now this, the great central lowlands, or also called as the central plain, is again further divided into two parts because of five lakes and the river St. Lawrence, which falls around this area. The five lakes the first, Lake Superior, which is the largest lake in North America, Lake Superior. Lake Michigan, Lake Huron, Lake Eric, and Lake Ontario. This lake and the river joining this lake, River St. Lawrence, this area makes, divides the Great Central Lowland into two parts. Number one, the Canadian Shield and the Mackenzie Basin. The Canadian Shield and the Mackenzie Basin. And number two, the Missouri Mississippi Basin. Now let us look at the Canadian Shield and the Mackenzie Basin. The Canadian Shield is well known for its very old hard rocks belonging to the earliest time of Earth's history. They are the very old rocks in the world. Canadian Shield, which surrounds the Hudson Bay area. Okay, everyone, please turn to page number 31 in your book and look at map 4. Are you ready? Page number 31, map 4. Yes, if you are there, now let us look at where is this Canadian Shield. If you look in the map, you will find a bay named as Hudson Bay in this area. This is the Hudson Bay. Now, similar to the Baltic Shield around the Baltic Sea in Europe, Around the Hudson Bay, we have the Canadian Shield and they have some of the oldest rock. We will find the oldest rock of the ancient earth, earth history in this area. Next, we have River Mackenzie, which flows towards the north into Arctic Oceans. So that's why this area is known as Canadian Shield and Mackenzie Basin. <coughs> now, Canadian Shield and Mackenzie Basin was worn down into the rocky plains. This area was worn down into the rocky plains over a long period of time. Once 
it had remained uh, covered with ice for very long durations and due to it a stop soil was removed by the ice and only the rocky surface remained now this basin has more th hundreds of lakes in it which was formed after the melting of this ice now in the lower half of this plain below these uh, lakes flows a river named as Missouri in this area and it joins with river Mississippi and flows towards the Gulf of Mexico many tributaries of Missouri and Mississippi the streams the small rivers from the Western Highlands and Eastern Highlands join this river Missouri and Mississippi and here we will find very fertile alluvial soil which are very good for agriculture work. The alluvial soils are very fertile. This alluvial soils actually is when the, there is an erosion of soils from the higher lands, the soils are taken away by the rivers and when it reaches the plain, the river, river throws these uh, soils along the side of the rivers and the, these soils the settles are called alluvial and these alluvial soils are very fertile now now in this Missouri Mississippi basins it slopes from north to south whereas in the Canadian Silt and the Mackenzie basins from center it goes towards the north the center is high the southern part is high and it slopes towards the north now in the south in the Missouri Mississippi basins the upper part of this Missouri Mississippi basins the northern part of this basin is called the Peraris and the southern part is called the Gulf Plain the Peraris and the Gulf Plain near the the Gulf Plain is near the Gulf of Mexico this was the great central lowlands now we'll look at the second part of the lowlands the eastern coastal plain also known as coastal lowlands now this eastern coastal plain or the coastal lowlands falls between the Appalachian mountain in the eastern highlands and the Atlantic Ocean and it runs along the coast of the Atlantic Oceans. This eastern coastal plain is very narrow in the, in the northern side and as it goes towards the southern side it widens up till the Gulf of Mexico. Now on the northern part of this uh, coastal lowlands it is well indented means the lands are well cut exactly near the sea or the oceans it makes a good natural harbor. The harbor means where the ships are kept, a big ships. So people do not have to make it artificially, the harbor, but this provides a natural harbor because the lands are cut or lands are indented very well with in the water. Now if you go towards the southern part of this coastal lowlands, there are a long sand beaches. Do you know what is the beaches? And these beaches, if you have watched the movies, where people go near the sea or the ocean areas for taking the sun bath, the sandy area, this is called beaches. And in the south, there is a long sandy beach. Now let us just do a short revision on this again. Between the Western Highlands and the Eastern Highlands runs the central, the Great Central Lowlands. Is this Great Central Lowland is divided into two parts by the five lakes and the river Saint Lawrence. The upper half is known as Canadian Silt and the Mackenzie Basin. 
and in the lower half it is known as Missouri Mississippi Basin because the river Missouri and Mississippi flows in this basin and hundreds of tributaries the rivers the small rivers or streams from the western highland and eastern highland join this Missouri Mississippi river and it flows towards the Gulf of Mexico now near the coastal area near the coastal coast of Atlantic oceans between the Appalachian mountain and the Atlantic oceans this area is known as the eastern coastal plain or also known as the coastal lowlands the upper area the northern half of this coastal eastern coastal plain is it provides a very good facility for natural harbor and in the southern half of this uh, coastal plain it provides long sandy bridge 